believe we're live now. Uh, it'll take about 20, 30 seconds. But uh, we're at home. We haven't left yet. We're going to leave the house for a bit. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we'll take it from there. I haven't even gotten ready to go anywhere yet. So we're going to let Dottie talk to you. I got to... <clears throat> get batteries together for this as well. I haven't done that yet. Move my cable here. No nothing behind it, is it? We'll have two parts. Uh, we're gonna have this part until about 5.30. And then a second part where we're probably just going to be at home messing with the computer, AI, these kind of things. And uh, that's how that'll go. So I need to actually get ready. Mel found out she hid behind the door. She just knocked my demeanor at the rest. So... Set this down here, and you guys can talk to Dottie while I uh, get ready. <laughs> so Todd is now going to work on getting ready for the day. I am all ready. We had breakfast potatoes, and I had two slices of toast with honey and peanut butter for breakfast. I'm wearing a little strapless dress. And it is now noon, so like we said, we would start at noon. Go ahead and post on Instagram that we are live on YouTube. So we're happy to have you guys here. Daddy will be right back, Belle. Daddy's getting ready. <laughs> Belle's not used to the door being shut to the bathroom. Daddy will be back. I promise you, Daddy will be back. I know, you're a daddy girl. Come here, Belle. Benjamina is over there somewhere, right there. There's Belle. Come here, baby. Bring Mama your toy. So, we are live, and Belle's playing with her rattle toy. Todd is brushing his teeth, and he'll get dressed. We are doing well, Ryan. Glad that you are doing very well. Thanks for being here. Yeah. 
You want to see your toy for just a minute? This is a rattle. Well, for cats. <laughs> she already took some of the feathers off. See it rattle. She's staring at me. Come here. Not hurting her, she just meowed. Here's Belle. Here's Belle. Let's add to all our friends. Hi, everyone. She's feisty right now. You're all I'm to throw your toy. <laughs> nice catch, Bell. <laughs> she hit her head on water. The elephant toy is like a scratchy post that has a rattly tail. So. She's crazy. Benjamin is. Come here. Come here, baby. Yeah, you. It's, I just moved my hand. You can see Belle on the floor, Benjamina up there. So, they're going crazy. Yeah, you, baby girl. Both of you. Throwing a little lipstick in the shade. Pink chocolate. It's a little lipstick. She doesn't want to see the cubby down here. I've got my rings on. Engagement ring. Wedding ring. Well, shut a little bit better. Engagement ring. Wedding ring. Promise ring that Todd gave me. Hey, Bestie Boo! Welcome. Your nieces are absolutely insane. If I can get one's being very smacky. Would you stop smacking me? Are you smacky mood? Bell's in a smacky mood. And I don't mean smacky, I mean I mean she could be a little smacky. Hold on, Bell. Come on. There your auntie's in the chat. Say hi, Auntie Cargo. Or, or growl. I'm not hurting her. This is just... <laughs> Get her butt out of my face. There you go. And then Benjamin is back there. She literally has her butt like right there. Yeah, she's talking. She's talking, bestie. This happens daily. I'll hold her and she'll just talk. And then Benjamin is in the back. In that box.
I'm talking about you girls. <sighs> Belle just had that Zoomies a few minutes ago. Right now the door to our bathroom is closed and she doesn't like that. I'm sure they'll be happy when this door opens. Benjamina in the back just staring. Let's see if I can grab her. Yeah, you, Benjamina, come here. We're not going to fight it. You're fine. Say hi to your auntie. We gotta go to Walmart and get some cat food. Here's Benjamina. You're looking at me. Yeah, you're smelling my breath. Look, say hi to your auntie. And I don't know what else we're doing. Maybe Goodwill. Yeah, your auntie loves your furry face, baby. Look at that mane. Like, stop messing with my mane. I mean, look at that. Look at that mane. Okay, Kiki. You're Kiki. She's a mama's girl. Your mama's girl. Say, wherever mama is, I like to be. Or I only went to the thrift store yesterday. Oh, that's so sweet. That was a nice There's daddy. There's daddy. In the chat, in the chat. <laughs> Go play. That's really cool. I was never really in the monster. No, thoughts in here for me. for the batteries right now. Bell talked into the camera. My little bit of a puzzle today. 
will show you guys what we're working on with the puzzle. Nathan Bacon, we don't know. We got to Jeff is Jeff. And, uh, Who's that? Okay. Nathan, you don't sweat on it. Hopefully the battery's going upstairs in five minutes. I got one of those pink batteries in here. Really good. Sorry about the weird gimbal action. Turn it off once more. Make sure it's balanced. Trying to turn it on, and it looks like it. I mean. I'm going to just check the battery situation here. I know that I've got a couple here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. I know that I've got a couple here. I know what the pink ones are. I gave you all the pink ones I have. Did I make an accusation? No. I'm just letting you know. I, I don't know where they're at, right? I don't know Okay. That's all there is to it. batteries off of there, but I'm considering using this larger one, which I may have done at some point. I don't remember. So now I'm trying to these new shorter cables that I've got. Left upstairs, probably ought not. Negative amperage there on the uh, negative millilamps. And I don't see that uh, okay, the battery the gimbal is charging, but it still is drawing from the phone. So that's fine. Let me try this other bit here. It's like This one's charging 
ship. All right. Let me try this one once again and see what happens. I wonder what you're saying. See that number right there? Yeah. This says we're drawing just a little bit of power rather than charging more rapidly than we're drawing. Well, I mean, negative 257 is significant. Watch when I put this one on there, though. See, now it's a positive, almost 2,000 positive. The battery is fully charged. The output of it seems to be created. Positively by 21 milliamps. So, yeah, you know, that means uh, the, the, the battery lower. But all right, so it's at three. So we're gonna we're gonna go into town now. You go there. Right. So we need to find the other two of those. We're gonna try these cables. Door. Hey, have a good day. I, lock, I left the door unlocked. Okay, thanks. We're about to head out for a while. Oh, shit, I got it. I had some work done yesterday. I had the light on for a long time. Yeah. Our tent is from the church. She's done with her son and daughter in law. And then we really right around the corner to charge the battery back up. Proceed.
fully the serpentine belt. racist term, one of the good ones. This Circle K are only 99 cents plus tax. Other places have just gotten outrageous. Bucky's is $1.27. Across the street at Love's, they raise it to $1.90 something. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I said, nice knowing you. <laughs> and, and you know, it was nice. The people were nice, but I'm not going to go there anymore.
they would often give me free coffee, but I can't risk that they're going to do that.
post it. Oh, I'm trying to post a little TikTok video. But Not really, but you know, technology that is supposedly meant to make things more convenient and fast actually makes it worse. Yeah. So that's what was happening. There's one person in front of me. Ah. <laughs> but still, it took that long. gonna drop this off at the house and leave her be like okay I see you guys no <laughs> <laughs> we'll set you guys up with the cats okay have fun they'll entertain you yeah. if I entertain they'll just sleep I was telling him I know this isn't our normal Disney contact we'll be content we'll be back in a couple weeks What's normal now is once a month for a few days at a time, rather than driving down there every couple weeks for one day, you know, and really just only being at the park till like four or five in the afternoon. So, you know, we're going to have more content, but bunched together once a month. It's going to be a lot more fun than just a day. Yeah, it is. Why spend all that money on gas when you can spend it on a hotel room and get more out of the trip? straight across this road and uh, they're about you know between this causeway and the portion that leads over to Jekyll Island where the devious plan to create a centralized bank called the Federal Reserve was hatched uh, 12 of these tributaries were blocked off so they all filled up with mud you know that that water is actually pretty shallow in most parts not that you can walk in it, it's, you'd sink to your neck in mud and die, or you'd sink maybe further than your neck. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's the result of the causeway being built. But, you know, that's the nature of things. This is part of Highway 17 that 
at one point uh, this was the road you would take to go to New York or to Miami. And uh, now, of course, you take the Interstate I-95 to do that. The interstate system, of course, was developed by Dwight D. Eisenhower because uh, he needed to go out. He was commander-in-chief. He was the president. And he, uh, for military purposes, did a survey of, you know, what does it take to get from coast to coast? And it was a real pain in the ass. So this is why the system was developed. And if you look at the system, you'll notice that there are, I want to say, 10 interstates that go north to south. And they cross the nation. That going up the west coast, for instance, is five, the five freeway. But on the east coast, it's 95. But along the way, traversing north to south, you have the 15, the 25, the 35, the 45, the 65. I, I skipped the 55, but you get the idea. They all exist. They're like little north-south lines. They're not perfectly straight that allow you to cross the nation north to south. And they're spread out across the nation, starting with five, ending with 95. Now, uh, going across east to west, of course, the southernmost one is 10. And I've been across that, I don't even know how many times now, at least six. It's awful. Once you get to Texas, it just goes on and on forever. There's just nothing. These expansive Martian marsh regions inspired I guess who was the poet laureate at the time Sidney Lanier that this bridge is named for to write a poem called Marshes of Glen and you know tourism economy nonsense you know they would have you believe there's a tree up here on the left right not the left right just the left and they would have you believe, oh, this is the spot where Sidney Lanier sat and pinned the Marshes of Glen, or Marshes of Glen. There's no V, I don't think. And uh, <clears throat> that's nonsense, man. He wrote it in Baltimore. But he wrote it about, you know, what you see there, that expansive marshland. That, there's an island way over there. You can barely see it on the camera, but... Uh, This, this, in fact, this this shot just doesn't do it justice. I mean, now I'm not talking about that little uh, hammock that you see there in the site now. I'm talking about way the hell over there on the horizon. There's an island, St. Simon's Island. These little marsh hammocks are nothing. You know, like what you see on the center of the screen right now, it's just a tiny little piece of island. Most of these were developed by ships coming through and unloading ballast. In other words, they they would float too high in the water if they have no cargo. High cargo. So, so what they do is they put rocks in there to make it sink down a bit so it uh, just operates better. So when they get to where they're going and they're gonna pick up cargo, they unload that ballast. So they would dump a bunch of rocks in these spots around the uh, marsh. And you know, after a while, trees grew and you know uh, silt deposited and what have you you know so these little tiny islands called hammocks are really mostly a result of that right up here on the left is where they're like oh this is the tree and there's a little plaque there that says what I'm saying in this stupid voice not that my normal voice is not stupid but it's my even stupider voice well, oh, this is the tree under which Sidney Lanier sat and penned the marshes of Glen, right? No, it's not. Stop lying. You know that's what this little that's what this little lion marker's talking about over there. Not not the big one, but that one, that one over there. Well, maybe the big one says it too. You know, but that one over there. Huh. And then you got other lies that get told and that's a you know a multi tree oak tree 
there's another big fat one downtown called Lover's Oak that has, you know, some kind of lore attached to it. But then, and there used to be, right across the street there was a Chamber of Commerce, but it moved. And there was this, oh no, I'm sorry, the thing I'm about to talk about wasn't at the Chamber of Commerce. It was up here at this visitor center on the right, which is no longer a visitor center. But there was a, a, a cauldron, like a small cauldron or a big cast iron pot, however you want to look at it, right? <laughs> and this motherfucker, it, said, it used to be right outside this building on the other side of this building right here, okay? It says, this is the pot in which the first Brunswick stew was made. <laughs> That is the stupidest shit that I've ever heard. <clears throat> First of all, Brunswick stew. What is it and what's the origin of it? What it is, blood, is... No, what it is, blood. No, what it is, is, <laughs> is a stew made from whatever you've got available, right? Uh, whatever is in season has to do with it and whatever meat you can find. So this might have, you know, squirrel, possum, chicken, marsh hen. You might go as far as to put a terrapin in there, all right? But uh, the vegetables would be like corn, lima bean, tomato, right? Now, you might not always have that combination of meat. It's going to be whatever you have. And if you go to a restaurant, it's going to be pork, beef, and chicken. That's what's going to be in there. It's not going to be these other meats that are game, or rodents, or marsupial, right? It's going to be ovine and porcine. <laughs> it's going to be the stuff you're used to buying at a grocery store. Mickey Stein's in the chat now. Hey, what's up, Mickey? And, of course, the vegetables remain the same, you know corn, lima beans, tomato, and then you got other stuff in there, you know, what's this here sauce is in there, uh, it a, it's Worcestershire sauce, right, Worcestershire sauce, that's what I'm trying to say, Worcestershire sauce. The best Brunswick stew that I've had so far mm -hmm. is one that Jeff brought me from, I don't know where it came from. Probably from Max, but I'm not sure. She's going to speak with her dad for a minute here. Hello? Okay. So there's other stuff in Brunswick's too. But the problem is this, okay? <clears throat> the origin of it. Not only can you not say the origin of it is this fucking one pot right here. That's the craziest shit ever. You can't really say where it came from. Was it Brunswick County, North Carolina? Or was it Brunswick, Georgia? I think the likelihood is it was Brunswick, Georgia. And Congress put out some crap saying that it was, but just because they say something doesn't make it true, ever. I learned recently there was a Brunswick, Maine arrest. Okay, but they're not in the running. No, I know. Okay, there's Brunswick, Ohio. They're not in the running. It was one of these two places I said. Yes, I know. Just okay, kidding. okay. But it's impossible to say, but it's still a disputed thing. But even if you narrowed it down and said it is Brunswick, Georgia, it didn't come from that fucking pot. If it, that was the case, you'd be able to say, look, here's the provenance, here's here's where it, who owned this pot, here's the, 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 
custody history, like who had the pot along the way. We know the person that came up with this generic ass idea, right? right. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. That is tourism lore. And that's nonsense. And I'm all for tourism, but come on, man. That's ridiculous. Oh, I agree. There's other shit that's not lore, but it's blown out of proportion, okay? We have an area called Bloody Marsh. You know, and the, the marsh ran red with blood. You know, these these colonial soldiers and these British soldiers out there and what have you, and, you know, six people died. That's what happened. <laughs> you know, I'm sure parts of the marsh did run red with blood, but it's not like it was some huge battle. You know, it's like one of these battles where guys are lined up over there, guys lined up over here, and they have these inaccurate muskets they're firing at each other. And six people did get hit and killed, you know. Other battles occurred here. But, uh, this basically was, even though we're 29 miles north of Florida is where we are, this basically was the very southern border of the contiguous states, right? That Florida was Florida. And it was a Spanish occupation, whereas this was British, right? And the area between here and I don't know how far south, but into Florida, was considered a disputed territory at the time. But clearly now Florida is part of the United States of America, etc. But this was as far south as you could get, so it was kind of a, the front lines. We have a comment in the chat, Todd. Yeah. St Mana says, stopping by for a little, doing laundry and packing bags because tomorrow morning going to the beach with my mom. Well, that's cool. We'll have fun with your mom, Mana Mouse. That's the beach. Absolutely. We don't go to the beach. We live near a beach. We just don't go to it. That's not our type of thing. I mean, I've done it a lot in my me life, too. but I'm certainly not getting in the fucking water. No, me too. We take a belted beach. <laughs> that was adorable yeah. when we first got her. That was adorable. There's a lot of sharks. There's a major shark breeding ground between one of the islands. The, the closest island to our house, Jekyll Island, and the one to the south of that's Little Cumberland Island, and then there's Cumberland Island. Over by there is a major, major, major shark breeding ground. Uh, one area is called the hole. It's a deep pit area in the ocean, and around there, sharks breed like crazy. So there's a lot of sharks. I like sharks. I've seen people just <laughs> over on St. Simon's Island. You know, when you're at the pier, there's always somebody catching a shark. Okay, but I've seen people literally just stand on the beach with a net and just jump in there and grab sharks. I believe. Yeah. I don't believe in killing sharks. That breaks my heart. No, I don't want to kill them. No, but I've seen... Like, I just don't want to go in the ocean. I saw them doing that on the pier once. It chopping head off the shark. It, 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 yeah, it, they're probably going to eat that shark. But still. Sad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, a cow, fuck him. Or her. Yeah. Fuck that cow. Just chop its head off. <laughs> Chicken, chop. Turkey, chop. But the shark, oh. <laughs> that made me cry. The shark is so adorable. It is. <laughs> Sharks are friends, not, not food. food. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start crying over a damn shark. Okay, okay, right. <laughs> Got your day going, Daddy. Oh, you know, I'm good crying over a shark. Alright, now we're going to Target. Anything. Damn, I cannot see. All right, we'll do that.
Let me make sure I actually locked it. I'm OCD like real bad. Okay. Our number in? Yep. Claire had it, honey. Oh. Where's this shit? Oh, that's the right part, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of puppy. Yeah, alright, cool. You don't have to see my face. This is what I used to look like on Hangouts. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I would use a green screen sort of effect. But Megan's husband's in the chat. Megan's husband's in the chat. What? I'm letting you know Ryan and Megan's husband say hi to you. Okay. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? says I can talk. Every time I talk, I get cut off. That's probably all we're doing here.
Where's your next one? I guess to uh, Goodwill or something. Yeah, we don't have, what? We don't have groceries sitting in the car. Well, all we're going to get is eggs. I think they'll be okay. And cat food. Yeah, that's not a grocery. very common here. Yeah. That's the main thing I love. I mean, other than me with Todd. But I love living here because it's so beautiful. Or sugar, no. Did you ever? Yeah, I've done that in my life. You and Granddad are the same way, you just think it's straight up black. Yeah. Megan said that looks like a really nice target, a lot bigger than ours. I go there at least once a week looking for sports cards. That's cool. Cards? Yeah, sports cards, she says. Like, some, like baseball and. Yeah. Type of stuff. Damn. What? Looking up the Van Office Depot building, or what, what was Office Depot. Often, but I don't know that we do that much interesting stuff. <laughs>
watching Dottie scroll on her phone. <laughs> Megan said, beautiful day here too. Couldn't pass up a walk and some yard work. And Megan said, yeah, the refresher sounds tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely wanted one today. Use my Target gift card because there's Starbucks inside Target. And then I scan her for points. It is pretty hot here today. It says it's 79, but the high is 81. Missed a joke earlier because it was it was it wasn't in here. But Craig said he'd be in and out. He'd try to stop by because he'd be boating. So I told Dottie to send a message that said, "Todd says in a Mexican accent, who are you boating for?" <laughs> that was pretty funny. I thought it was funny. I thought it wasn't funny too. He so did he. He messaged me back on my account saying, "Aha, uh -huh, nice." Todd. Now something that literally happened in my life is I used to make this joke I'd be like you know B as in Victor right because V and B are the same they're both B's in, in Spanish and uh, <clears throat> then one of my friends who's very Mexican I don't mean he's like a Cholo or a Chicana he's he was Mexican okay <clears throat> but, uh, he, he said that to me one day he said that to me. I was like, oh, man, it's become a reality. Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Megan's funny found that funny. Her husband found that funny. He said, you guys are entertaining. You could be doing absolutely nothing, and I was, it would still be worth watching. Well, that's good, because we do absolutely nothing a lot of the time. No, I'm <laughs> But, no, we do appreciate that. You absolutely. Know, like, that really means a lot to us, Ryan. So. That's right. Grab this. We're just going to get cat food here. We're not really going to get groceries because we're going to be screwing around and can't be driving around with groceries. The eggs, I'm sure, would be fine, but we're not going to get any right now. We'll be okay. We got to get the baby some food. Uh, What's on, baby? The OCD. Let me just make sure I know I fucking locked it, but I have to make sure. It's okay. It's better to check it 100 million times. That's how I, feel. I guess it's better to check it once. You get into the three or four times of having to check it, you're getting into the debilitating range of, of OCD. Actually, the D in OCD, the disorder part, where it's affecting your life. I used to be like that. I couldn't couldn't leave my house without having to go back to the door like three or four times. And it's like, all right, this is just insanity. I was diagnosed. Like true insanity. Yeah. My mom and dad would tell you at age four, I was constantly checking the doors and windows, asking them so many times. Yeah. What is this terrible music? Oh yeah, let me make sure my Wi-Fi is on. I'm gonna make sure I'm connected to the Walmart Wi-Fi. going to tell me the Wi-Fi is available.
Yeah, it's, it's just showing the entrance. Yeah. Now put standby in the chat. This is like the entrance, yes. Yeah. Oh, there was the damn Wi Fi. Here we go. It was fuzzy. It was fuzzy. Alright. We're not going to get crazy mad cat food this time. We're just... So you want like 16 pound bag? so much. clearance thing here. I don't need to share this shit. It's ridiculousness. All this stuff is about it. People walk around with this bullshit. Oh, that was a fucking giant drink. That's that too. What was that? Yeah. It really is. I just spent $50 on a cup. I am not talking about it. $50? Yeah, I had it made. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I want one too. I'm like, if I don't. Well, I hope it wasn't this like this. <laughs> Look at the size of this crap. No, I know. That's a really good size, too. <laughs> Helen likes candles. We'll get her this for Christmas. Is that a dollar? Yeah. All right. It's a dollar. Well, if it's a dollar, just uh. They're probably good size. Well, who else wants it? Why don't we get one for Mom? Oh, I'm going to get one of these for Brittany. Okay. You 
Queen. Five dollars. Maybe we're getting both. Five dollars. Five dollars. Todd, this is that lip balm. I've been using lip balm. Yep, yep. Can I get one? Well, yeah. Isn't that what your uh, grandmother likes? She loves her first teeth, too. All right. Is that, is that proper? Does it have to be a certain color? I don't think so. I want one for me. Okay? All right. Yeah, take me in. All right, get one. Yeah, one for me. I want one. All right. She's got so many cups. That's why I'm reluctant. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell we'll never get the end of it if I don't get a stuff. But you know what? You can get those away as gifts. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about Nuna? Do you think she would want sure. one? Sure. I don't think so, but you know. There's this design too. Sure, whatever. It has Trying to think. Any surprises. Lauren, uh -huh. Brittany, right. Rizal, Severus. Sure. I, I don't know if he'd want it, but go ahead. For a dollar. Get the Christmas shopping out of the way right now. <laughs> <laughs> Meg said, can't be a dollar. All right. That's it. For a dollar? Mm-hmm. That ain't bad. Human for cat food, less with dollar stuff. I mean, that's cheaper than the dog tree. That's damn true. Oh, those are nice candles for a dollar. They're normally like $7. Yeah, it says like $6.77 for a damn candle. About $1. Mm-hmm. That's a big-ass candle for a dollar. Do any of these take cash? 38 36 and 35 All right. Sounds like a pile driver. Uh, oh, I didn't hear that one. Yeah. Oh, huh. Okay. Is that music? If it is music, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be music. It is. That's what it is. Y'all make sure you double bag the glass stuff.
can't leave the uh, the bees just out. We have to put it in the cooler. Okay. Right. Well, we do what I just said. Yeah. Uh, you know what? They're probably going to look at me. Look at this. See, that's fine. Craig, that shopping day? Uh, we really just came in to get some cat food. But, uh, we ended up getting a couple other things. We ended up getting a couple other things. Because like, they were like a dollar or 50 cent. And they would make good Christmas gifts. So we try to, you know, when we see an opportunity like that, <clears throat> we try to go ahead and take care of the Christmas stuff rather than, you know, looking for the, a month prior to Christmas ended up spending money on things that may not even be the right thing. We see things that are on sale and say, well, this would be the right thing. Let's get it. And do that way in advance. Less stressful. Yeah. Last thing on there. Chicken pea. Uh. charged up after driving all that way. I would think so, right? Yeah. Water. into two parts. One is called the Goodwill Outlet, which is kind of like digging through piles of junk. And the other is a normal Goodwill store. Now, at the Goodwill Outlet, we've never had much luck. We always just go in there and go, man, this is terrible. But a couple of weeks ago, without having to dig through junk, we bought a couple of trees there for three dollars a piece. Crazy. And one was uh, the box at eighty-eight dollars. The other one was one hundred and fifty-eight dollars. And we got them for three dollars each. Well, two ninety-nine. Megan has a question for you, Todd. Right. How did he go with the mechanic yesterday? Oh, great. That uh, while he uh, worked on the thing. We made a song, and uh, it took about time to make the song as it did for him to fix the thing. And uh, we'll play that 
song for you this evening. Heck, we could we could probably play a bit of it now, but it won't sound that good coming through the out that speaker and into this microphone. We'll play it later for you from the computer. We have several songs to play actually, and uh, we'll probably, uh, as a group, whoever's watching at the time, make a song as well by committee, like the way rap music is done, according to Ice Cube. O'Shea Jackson. That camera work was like a damn Bigfoot sighting. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. That's <laughs> like the worst. It's like... We have a question, Todd, from Ryan, Megan's husband. Do you ever buy things for super cheap at Goodwill and resell them online? Great way to make extra cash and also Mainly uh, from, Habitat, from Habitat for Humanity Restore. And from a place called Gather, which is like a small independent uh, thrift store where clearly it's mainly rich people donating to it. But Goodwill, usually the stuff around here anyway, is too picked over. You can't get anything good usually. It's almost impossible. Now we go to other Goodwills though, and absolutely you'll find things that are... Uh, worth getting and selling but uh this goodwill is just fucked for that man there used to be three goodwills in this town but due to uh in my opinion really bad management and judgment now there's just one and then it got cut in half and made into half of this dig through piles of junk outlet so <clears throat> this is not a good candidate store for that or what you call arbitrage. Megan said, I wonder if the ostrich egg is still there. And that was at a good one, which is in uh, St. Mary's, Georgia. That's not this Goodwill. Yeah, I immediately texted Megan about the, the ostrich. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Some ostrich had to turn its butt inside out. I was going to lay that in. No, it doesn't have a butt. But you make your choice. Cloaca or cochlea? Choose now. Let's just say... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's just say on the Safari on Animal Kingdom, we looked over, we saw a doctor butt inside out. Yeah, it was awful. We literally turned inside out, and it, I was... It's like, how does it have that much control over its butt? I want to get What is this person doing? Okay. So we're going to go in this part. But not expected. I'll no, be able to put up with it for very long. Buy by the pound. At least that's what's supposed to happen. We got a bunch of furniture in here today. A bunch of cat. Oh, great. They got music playing. It's going to get us copyright. I can't tell if this uh, couch is $5 or $10, but it's one of those two. This one's $5, but it's really dirty, you know what I mean? But it's better than throwing it out. It used to be they would just throw shit like this out into big dumpsters in the back. There were like six dumpsters back there. This one's $5. I mean, you want some $5 couches, I mean. There they are. Now, could you turn around and sell it for $10? Maybe. Is it worth lugging around? No. 
Now this is four dollars, right? This, this chest of drawers. And that seems incredible until you realize that, that one of the drawers is totally gone or fucked. That the, the front panel of it is. Now if it's like in there, in the drawer, you can glue that together and sell it. I, I don't know if it's actually like there's the knob. But the actual panel is unfortunately not there with it. So it would take a little skill to fix that because uh, you're gonna have to gonna have to match stuff, router, and you're gonna have to match up the wood grain and the stain. It's just not not something I would want to deal with. It. By the time you put that much time into it, hell, what are you gonna charge a hundred fucking dollars? Your top oh, yeah. <laughs> also, I crawled on the floor for this one because it was so pretty. Okay. Craig said one man's trash is another trash, Yeah. Look at this right here. Check this out. <laughs> I found that ornament and I found a silver one. You ever hear Frank Sinatra's version of this? See, it's like piles of junk. A lot of it's broken and stuff. Yeah. So this is one bin out of like... 16 maybe well I mean I say one this section is actually four bins and there's maybe like 16 of these sections you notice like this basket is broken you see printers that are missing parts and shit Oh, here you go. Here's a chest of drawers. It looks fine, and it is fine. I mean, yeah, I don't know how much they want for it, but somebody has replaced the very top of it with a sheet of plywood. So this is the kind of thing that ends up over here instead of in the main store because it's just not quite right. <laughs> Unidentifiable shit. Like, what is that? Now here's a little espresso machine. I bet it works too. Looks like it used to be next door for $7.99. This is a crust, man. This is like... That's pretty serious right there. Just manda me the key to send it to me. But uh, we have one and it works fine. So we, I'm not going to get this. I love you more. I imagine somebody like got this and never really used it. You know what I mean? So they just got rid of it after a while. Before I do that, I had to grab these just to show Todd. Yeah. You don't need the red ones, do we? No. I like the blue sparkly silver. This stuff in here is sold by the weight. So I can just take things out of here. It doesn't matter. I can get rid of those red ones. And these, this silver and blue one here she found separately. We just put that right there. are just going to weigh this. There's another blue one right here kind of like caught up with this green one. I don't know. The green one's okay. This here, man. I don't know how much this would be when you weigh it, but not much. And if it's working, that's a great deal right there. It's too bad that somebody's probably going to come in here and strew the parts all if I'm saying that correctly, all over the place. You know. all right. Bye -bye. There's Charlton Heston presents the Bible, Genesis on VHS. <laughs> Thank you. 
toggle switch box taped to it. So I don't know if it was always like that or if it just became that way in this bin. But is it a rising electric stand-up desk? Craig says there's a store by me that sells unopened merchandise with damaged boxes, tools, lawn equipment, etc. with rock bottom prices. It's called dirt cheap. That's awesome. That's awesome, Craig. Find a better way to stand this thing up in here. Todd's covered in his least favorite thing glitter. Well, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, we were working, doing a magic show in St. Augustine, and uh, <clears throat> across the way there was this little venue, and I mean it's a little ass venue, man, like a little courtyard, right? And it's a little ass stage in there, and uh, bands would play over there. And one night, this band was so loud, I was getting pissed off, because we're trying to sell tickets to people walking by, right? And it was so fucking loud. I was like getting angry. I was like, but you know what? They are like the most legit Bob Marley cover band I've ever heard in my fucking life. This is crazy. What's up with that? And uh, I looked it up. Like, who's over there? It was the Wailers. <laughs> I was like, man, you know what? I don't even know if you can fucking hear me because I can see the signals low and it pisses me off. So I was like, you know what? I'll put up with it. I just would we'll just listen to them tonight, you know? I can hear you. All right, good. I couldn't even talk over that man playing. It was so loud, but they were like, it was so perfect. I was like, how is that possible that the cover band would be so perfect? It was just the Wailers. It was Bob Marley's band. It was awesome. hits albums legend isn't that what they call it <laughs> like a height you want it and you make both sides the same and then you have a little desk table thing but I don't trust it they're too flimsy yeah looks pretty helpful oh yeah oh, oh, oh shit okay. 
Oh man. Oh, good one. I can't believe I missed it. You have it? Yeah, that's great. too crazy about the rolling stones. But I did, in fact, the, the very first IMAX thing I ever saw was stones at the max. And it was in a legit IMAX theater where the seats are like going up a wall and you're like right here in front of the screen, not sitting hundreds of feet away from it. Like when you look at that screen, you can't see the ends of it. And that's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be immersive. This is where I found the big box of Place the suitcase I use, but it needs to have one. It needs to be one of these where all four wheels roll and turn. It has four wheels. I guess that's what I'm really saying. That uh, you know, mine has two wheels. You have to like use it like a cart. Yeah. 
How can we carry all these ornaments? Uh, yeah. uh, Mind if I have a look on real quick? Yeah, that's yeah, like a...
this was in there. This is really pretty. I thought my mom was going to do this coconut. Yeah. Oh, we found some vines. I need to evaluate this. The idea here is you put some pots on top of this and some pots below it. We'll get it. We gotta, we're going to get these things too. Yeah, do I need to put this on? Five dollars, Buster. I think they're coming to pick up one of those couches. Or probably all of them. They're like, we could sleep 16 people on these four couches. Everyone gets their own bed. No, I didn't say that. No, four people getting. Uh. <laughs> we sleep in six hour shifts. Where's the van? Well, we're gonna cross the street. It's over here somewhere for sure. I see. Okay. And somehow we walked out with more work. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna show what we got. How many ornaments did Dobby need? Who knows what thing I'm gonna want each and every time. Surprise me. Get a bit laughing face. Here we have the Durs Mobile. So here's what we got. This bag that says home of the free because of the brave. Merca. Doesn't say Merca. But full of ornaments. Are you still allowed to say that? Ornaments? Yes, baby. Okay. And I call Asians now? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ornamental. No, that's a different thing. All right, all right, yeah. This shelf. The idea is your cabinets are so high. And rather than stack pots on top of each other, you put a couple below this and you put a couple on top of it. It's by Farberware. Farberware. And then. Talk to me about this. The piece of resistance. <laughs> no, resistance. Yeah, the piece de resistance. Resistance. is off. Is a. Well, there's this, uh, like, lettuce keeper 
lid. It's kind of domed. Mm -hmm. This is really for a lettuce keeper. But these, we have several of these. These, these fit the old style of half gallon ice creams. But <clears throat> I uh, put other stuff in them. We love them. And use them for freezer purposes. They are made for the freezer. And then one I've never really had was the little version of that. I don't have a lid for it, but I had to get it. Ryan said he loves our license. It's like, oh, thank you. Yes, it's funny. It's like I had a baby, that one, that Tupperware. I just saw the first one. I didn't know there was anything in it. Neither did I. Did you want to go into Until it? I cut it open, it was revealed that the murderer had actually killed two people. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no there was a thing in there. Yeah, we're going to go in the, the other Goodwill now. Okay, I'll try to get the non-Bigfoot sighting version of this. There's two of them. I wonder if they're like a mating pair. Oh, no, I don't know. They don't look great. <laughs> I don't judge how you look or how you... I'm mate. just kidding, man. This, honey, I haven't... careful over here. Yeah, I've never had someone in there just hand me. Oh yeah, they see they're picking up multiple couches. They're like, just stack all four on here. They're like, five dollars. Cinco dollars. What the hell is this thing? It's a juicer. You put the juicing in there and it probably comes in. Hmm. Well, we have a lot of juicing implements already. Look at the camera bag. It's got like a stage light in it. I wonder if it works. Doesn't matter. $34.99. We're not getting it. I mean, it's probably like. A better deal than it would be if you bought it new, but we're not fucking with that. Oh boy, she's finding decorations. Oh, okay. Some old pimp. I don't want. Honestly, this one kind of Can I get a witness? I want a better looking my side. Can I get a witness? Uh, do you <laughs> think you can hold the chat while I go to the restroom? Yes. I don't know if I can get this thing to stand up properly. Either. Man, I used to love to do this at karaoke. Because it goes, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> That part right there, man. <laughs> You'd be driving people nuts with that. Man. See now over on this side, like this couch right here. $30. No difference. It's not all super messed up. Like, the others are pretty messed up. You might be able to clean them up, but I don't think so. sure what it is but it's like my application would be using it for magic that's it's really good Ooh, 25 dollars i don't think so this table It's a nice folding table, but I just can't do that. I 
I got this picture of Frida Kahlo here. And it's so funny. At Epcot, they'll have one of these like opportunities to take a photo of yourself. And it has one of these deals where there's like a, a hole you put your face in. But it's not a perfect oval. It's like large. And in it, there's this suspended thing that is meant to be Frida Kahlo's eyebrow. But everybody will try to put their face in there with that at their lip level, like a mustache. <laughs> so their, their face won't fit because there's not enough room between the eyebrow and the forehead to use it as a mustache. And uh, I've seen it happen so many times. Dodd did it the first time she said that. I see so many people doing that. Uh, yes. Now here's a good thing for arbitrage, right? Five ninety nine cocktail set. Might be able to sell that for more. I'm not going to do it, but it came from Ross. It says twenty dollars on it. You know. So this particular Goodwill usually sucks for anything like that, but there you go. I found one item. Now what do we got here? I think we have a toddy coffee maker here. It's called. Yeah, it's what's called. Oh, maybe this is, I missed the hall. We can show it again. So here we have it. And this is the best way to make coffee, okay? This is a toddy coffee maker. And what happens is you have this jar. And you have this bucket. And there's some other shit in there, but that sits on top of there, and uh, you never actually brew the, uh, the coffee with heat. You do it just with time, and uh, it's a cold brew. It's less acidic, and I just don't brew coffee at home. But for $3.99, that's outrageous deal right there. I just don't think I'll ever do it, you know. And when you do it, it's very strong. You actually dilute it. And you either take uh, one part concentrate to two parts water or three parts water, depending on what you've done. And it is pretty much the very best way to make coffee. Then the popcorn bucket we have. That's good. How much is that? $1.99. Because we have an extra lid, honey. Mm -hmm, that can't this one. Really? Yeah, yeah. $1.99. Thanks, Bobby. We have an extra lid for that one. Yeah, since we have that extra lid, we'll go ahead and get that and match it up. Seem bigger than that, yeah. Got some printers in here. Is this a fog machine? It's just a mystery, I think. I don't know, man. I can't. I need a chicken. Megan says, only classic resort mugs. We have some of those. Okay. Here. I'll just use my phone for a moment.
I want fifty dollars. It doesn't even matter if it works or not. Fifty dollars, I ain't getting it. It is a fog machine, and it says it creates low lying fog, so that's good. That's hard to get. Usually, fog doesn't want to stay on the ground. You have to make it with dry ice, which is the old school Hollywood method. It's the better method, but rather than using just fog juice. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not paying fifty dollars for shit. But I got a buddy that was talking about needing a fog machine. I don't think that was the right choice for him. Though, so. Otherwise, I'd be calling him right now. and shit now. Oh, this is filled with cheer. Oh, it's in there, man. Shit. That's false advertising. How you doing? Or maybe you just can't see cheer, you yeah. know? scratched up if they have a non-stick of any kind. Yeah. Yeah. Almost all right. There's one right there. It's all scratched up. Here you have Calphalon. Great pot. Kind of scratch up on the inside. I, mean, I think we're good on pots and pans and shit. But, you know, if it were like in perfect condition or something for five ninety nine, that'd be a different story. But that's so rare to find that at a uh, Goodwill or at least at this Goodwill. I didn't, oh, shit, sorry, sorry, I, I, let me just put, I, I just got distracted, I, I thought this said something else than what it says. I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, is. yeah, of course. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> but, you got really distracted by that. Yeah, I was like, how can that be? You know? <laughs> but it was nothing, it was nothing. All right, so. <laughs> I mean, there's a store called Badcock Furniture. Yeah. So I swore for a long time I'd never come back to this Goodwill too because they started doing this dumbass shit, which I will demonstrate now. It was like this. Pants, right? <clears throat> now, uh, we all know they've been around for a long time. And we all know they're meant to be worn a certain way. 
and something that complements pants are hangers. And an innovation on the hanger was this clippy sort of hanger made for pants, right? And they're made for a certain use and made to be used a certain way. But there are certain cultures, well, really just one, that doesn't think that pants should be worn the way that everybody wears them, all right? And this store, well, let me put it this way. The general manager was named Tequila, and it was spelled T-A-K-I-L-A. <laughs> and this was the one that was like a regional manager. But the manager manager here in the store was a guy I went to high school with. I told him, man, I see a lot of Goodwills doing this dumbass shit. And if you do it here, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to give up on you. I can't come back, right? And so for years, I didn't. And I'll show you what they did, all right? This is how you hang pants on hangers, right? But I don't know if I can get this right, but here's how it went. Yeah, we're totally deaf. I can't even figure out how they were doing it. The pants were like, the pants were like, in an angle though, it was all fucked up. It wasn't like exactly 90 degrees like this. It was like, it was like at a 45 degree angle, right? So I'll try to approximate that. They were doing this shit where they were hanging the pants like this. Alright? And they were like, oh, this is better because you could just see the tag in there. Right? But the fact is, you couldn't see the pants. All you could see was the top edges of the pants. Whereas right here, I could just look through those super quick. Right? Because it's done the way it ought to fucking be done. Right? But they, uh, they just did the equivalent of uh, sagging the pants on the hanger. And I was like, okay, I can't even come here anymore. And it was widespread. It wasn't just this one. Because we're talking about a regional manager named Takila here, right? And uh, it just was just so awful. I, just, I, I didn't go to Goodwill for a long time because of that shit. What is this shelf? This shelf is interesting. It almost looks like some kind of store display, really. It's like, or unless that's two different shelves. That is. No, it's one shelf on three sides. That's pretty nice, though. Yeah, it's very interesting. Panda said, oh, Epcot, and I was like, yeah, totally Epcot. How much is it? I don't know, probably someone bought it and probably took the price thing off. Well, that's a very interesting shelf. Not that we're going to get it anyway, but... Oh, wow, I like Epcot. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Jeez, I keep dropping the shit. Eight ninety nine, huh? Kind of... Wobbly? Yeah. I mean, that, that lady was wobbly there. Well, this is like an over-toilet thing. So what you do is, like, strap it to the wall. Yeah. You know? We're going to try to get it off my mom. Oh, we are? The one that she was just thinking about replacing. Oh, okay. I told her that we would love it. Oh, 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 okay. We're not buying one for her. We're going to get one from her. Hopefully, I, got I told her. I got you. But what is this tape all over it? It's got tape all over it. I don't like that. Here's another interesting display type shelf. I need to go super wide angle here. That's very interesting. You only find stuff like that here at Epcot. Oh, toilet paper holder. How much do they want for that? Six dollars. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll get it because we need one for the downstairs bedroom. Oh, we really do. Panda said, I like American Santa Claus Man. Oh, I hate him almost an indescribable amount. <laughs> Not really. <laughs>
the stable, right? It turns with it, but if I lock it, it's not gonna turn now. It's gonna stay right on that one object, no matter what I do, you know what I mean? But if I unlock it, now it turns. If I want it to go up down, I got this trigger. Now I can point it down, point it up. Yeah. Let me sit it back down. It's 912-399-0209. We'll show you what we got in a minute. We got this Tiana popcorn bucket. Oh, I got this thing backwards, hold on which we have a lid for already. That, uh, you know, a lot of times you'd be riding around. Thank you. All right, have a great day. A lot of times you'd be riding around Disney and something would be laying there, you know what I mean? And one of the things laying there was a lid for that popcorn bucket. So that's just serendipity that we found a match for it. Yeah, I, I think it has something to do with like a uh, side buffet or something like that. But lay it out right here. First of all, we got this toilet paper holder because we need one of those. But then I got this mat that's like. I feel like this is this felt side is meant to be the bottom or something. I'm not really sure. That's perfect for like card tricks and shit. And uh, the other side's like, like a fake leather, or it might be real leather. I think it's fake. Though. Here you go. Let me put this away, this receipt. But they have a light right there in that bag. That it's pretty nice, but it's like thirty-five dollars, man. It's like a stage light or a club light or something. All right. Thank you, have a good day. We might go by Gather or something. Gather is not open on Sunday. Oh, that's right. Well, then we'll go to Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A is not open. Oh, that's right. All right. Well, we'll go to. Uh... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I forgot it was Sunday, and I'm not even a stoner anymore. So I was like, we'll get some salmon, baby. Oh, don't, don't throw that in the back, okay? Hold on. I'm gonna throw this. Uh... Toilet paper roll holder back here. In the bucket. Megan and uh, said, "Oh, nice choices." And Ryan said, "Right outside. I hope to see one of your magic shows one day." Yeah, me too. I haven't done it in a long time. I need to be practicing that shit, even though I don't have an audience or a venue. I haven't. I haven't practiced. Man, I uh, picked up a couple of interesting tips the other day, a couple of tricks. One tip that was just absolutely brilliant, I had never thought of for some reason, that eliminates a bit of fishiness that I really can't describe in detail, but uh, I just thought it was a genius tip, and uh, some tricks that were very good too, mainly card ones that, uh, yeah, you can only use so many card tricks before people get fed up with that shit, in my opinion, but, uh, there were some others as well, but just one thing, it was also kind of a card trick, but it wasn't really about the cards, and I didn't know how it was done. So when it was, I was like, how is he doing that? He's like, 
you know, pushing down real hard on the card to make it do what it's doing or what. But once it was revealed to me, I was like, oh, oh, oh man. You were tripping out there. I couldn't believe it. I just, <laughs> like, that's great. I just have some of my drink. Todd has some water. Like, how did I not realize what was going on? I don't know, babe. I was surprised by that, too. Most most things I know exactly how they're done when I first see them, first time I ever see them. Like, there's this one guy, he considers himself a little bit of a big shot because he's had a little bit of success. He gives this trip for this other guy. And, I don't know, there was some guy confused. I was like, well, it's easy how you did it. You, I said, you know, I'll, I'll say a couple times. Like, you had one in your pocket and uh, the others were on the bottom and what have you, you know. He's like, well, I, I thought it was good, but I guess it sucks. I was like, no, no, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. I said, don't, just because I know how it's done doesn't mean it's not awesome. That uh, nobody's going to figure that out ever, right? And uh, but I instantly understood how he did it except for one portion. I was like, I don't understand how you did this one thing that he told me. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Which I probably, I would have figured that out eventually. But it, it, like instantaneously as the trick was happening, I didn't. I didn't figure it out, but if, if you know, you gave me five minutes or ten minutes or something, I would have figured out at least a way to make it happen. Maybe not his exact way, but probably would have ended up with that exact way. But we had two lecturers from Argentina, and uh, one of them was okay. And he did a variety of things, which was great. Because the other guy was excellent, but it was all cards. But he was excellent. Oh, okay? he really was. Yeah. Was and it's not just about the tricks at all. It's not about that, really. I mean, the tricks, as they were happening, I understood what was going on. Oh, he, he had one that wasn't precisely a card trick. And I pointed out to him, I said, look, to me, it's a little fishy. I can see what's going on there. And everybody else was like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. They didn't understand how he was doing it. I understood what he was doing. I was like, I don't think anybody will notice, but I notice, you know, that this piece of paper looks just slightly different from this other piece of paper, you know, and that's what it boiled down to. And it's obvious to me. Now, if I didn't have my glasses on, I thought I wouldn't see it, but I took them off. I was like, nah, I still see it. <laughs> but I just try to be honest with people, you know, because you're not going to get that kind of constructive criticism out of people. They're not willing to tell you if your trick's fucking up. They just won't tell you. I'll tell you. You know? I'll tell you in front of everybody. Oh, I know you will. And, and I don't mean any insult. Take it as me helping you. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. I, I would want people to tell me. You know, if I got egg on my face or something, I want to know. What the fuck is this on my face right now? <laughs> Nobody's telling me whatever it was, a fuzz or something. I didn't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I had something, but I don't expect you to notice it's right, right on my eye there. Tell you what, those kids love your magic show. I'm sure. Every kid, their reaction. I really, I remember one thing. He's like, is it worth it? I'm like, yeah, it's worth it. They're like, she like, is it good for kids? I'm like, sure, yeah. He, I prefer he adults, but, but I, it's a different show if there's kids present. And the mom came up. She was really convinced about yeah. this. But like, thank you. really convinced me and seeing that smile on my kid's face. Maybe yeah. it's worth it. If there's kids present, Generally, their parents are there too, or, or an adult is with them at least. And as a result, different things can happen. Like my opening, act, my opening trick will be different. My opening routine, I should say, it'll be focused on the kid and some coins and stuff, right? Whereas if there's no kid present, and sometimes if there is, I'm going to do this completely insane thing with a whiteboard and stuff that you know says dimensional prediction and all this. It involves different ways of choosing. And then me getting these things wrong, numbers and stuff, and then eventually getting a card correct in a very funny way. But if there's kids present, I'm going to start with them, get them involved. And then later, I'm going to do some what's called by-play, where uh, I kind of make the dad look stupid while the kid becomes like the star of the show. And that's that's good, you know. That was funny. But that's always funny, you know, like... Always hilarious. I would fit in. But not like in a not in a not in a way that's too mean. 
you know, it's a little bit mean, but it's it's fine. I used to sit in sometimes if it got like really crazy hot and I just yeah. couldn't handle it. I was like, Todd, I just need a little break. It's not going to hurt anything if I got out there for yeah. a couple of weeks. And I would sit there and watch it. I liked seeing the reactions. And there's multiple things. I try to get each of them involved at some point, at least like selecting a card or something like that. Like one great thing to do is you have a kid select a card, all right? And it's whatever card they want. And I always ask him, you want to keep it or you want to change it? And, and I got this from Terry Ward. And they'll be like, I'll keep it. I mean, you should definitely change it. But if you want to keep it, you go ahead. Okay? You, should, you should definitely change it. And then... And, and, kind of goad them into changing it. So I take the card back, put it in the deck, and, and then I spread the cards out, let them select the card, and if I've done my job right, they'll get the same card. And my record is six times in a row. Okay? And they'll be like, that's the same card. And eventually they're like, it's all, they're all the same. And I'll show them, no, they're all, they're, they're all different, you know? And that's a mind blower right there, man, when you keep selecting the same card. And then eventually... They'll be like, mm, I'm going to take the top card. They always, always the top card, right? And the only I've written, do not pick. <laughs> but to escape picking out of the deck, they'll be like, I'll take the top one. I know that's not it. <laughs> it says, do not pick on it. That is so funny. I got that from Terry Ward, but he picked it up from somebody else. I forget who. <laughs> Someone's in the chat and they don't seem happy. What is it? Steve Balboni says, who's running this shit? Your mom. <laughs> it seems like they don't like it. <laughs> you got a problem uh, with it, Steve? <laughs> no, seriously, it seems like they have a problem. Just because Steve Bonobo has a problem with it doesn't mean anything. Balboni? Yeah. How's the audio? Let's check the audio make sure it's not all fucked up because. I'm just going to talk and do a little bit of an audio check just to see. No, it seems normal to me. It's going to echo a little bit because we can hear that. Yeah, it seems normal too. Just a troll, probably. No, I'm not going to call somebody a troll just because they dislike it. You know? You're entitled to your lack of opinion. You're not really giving an opinion. You're, yeah. you're, you're implying that you think it sucks or whatever, but that's fine. Alright. You're welcome here, though. Yeah. Unless you're really very inappropriate. You gotta realize something about streaming, and I doubt you're even still there, but at, at some point, like, we have, like, only 730 subscribers or something like that. Most of them have subscribed because of content, right? Because we go to Disney and do stuff at Disney and they just want to see the park. It's like being there by proxy, you know, vicariously. And I get that. I, I watch those streams too. But some people <clears throat> are more like, you know, viewing as our friends, you know? So it's not a matter of where we are or what we're doing. Right. And this is how it is that, you know, this is how it is with streamers or even people that just make videos, really. It doesn't have to be a streamer. But at some point, you're watching their channel for the person, not for the content. So that's a minute portion of our subscribers, of course. But it is a portion of our subscribers. That's why the numbers much smaller on this type of stream as compared to what is at Disney Park. And that's fine. Are we going to Jeff's? Oh, yeah, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, all right, well, Steve Balboni says, do you know Tommy Tough Knuckles out of New York City? No, it sounds like a magician or something, though. I don't know. Is that... Because, you know, one, one thing when you're doing tricks that require a lot of sleight of hand, you call it a knuckle buster. So, uh, I don't know. Is that a magician? Because, uh, it sounds like it could be a number of things, but in New York, probably half of the people are named Tommy Tough Knuckles, right? Like, oh, 
a lot of that going on, a lot of ant needs. But tell me, I don't know, or is that a magician? Because I mean, the, 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 the chances that you're a magician just happening to join when I happen to be talking about it are very low. <clears throat> but now that I'm talking about it, now that you're watching and you're bringing somebody up, the chance that that's what they are is high. So that's why I'm just trying to clarify. Is this a magician? Look that up, Tommy Tough Knuckles. Yes, magician out of New York City. Oh, cool. Right no, as I was about to. I don't know him, no. And I not only don't, do I not know him, I, I haven't heard of him, but I'll check him out I'll for sure. I'll take a screenshot of his comments so yeah. can refer to it later. Because, uh. And he, Steve says, I'm not a magician. That's cool. Right. Like I was saying, the chance of you're a magician that just happened to join when I'm talking about it are really fucking low, right? Mm -hmm. But. Now that I'm talking about it, and you're bringing somebody up, the chances of them being one was real high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Now, we have to go... Now, see, if I was in magician mode, I'd be like, you're, uh, you're bringing up a magician. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knew. Or really what you do is, and this is just giving a, giving a tiny secret away. You don't say, you're bringing up a magician. You say, that's not a magician by any chance, is it? Right, and then it seems like you said they are a magician, and if you if they say no, you say, well, I said they're not. <laughs> That's how you word things. And let me tell you something, I fucking hate like John Edwards. Or Edward Edwards. One's, a funny, one's a funny. That guy, I fucking hate him. Houdini would have hated him too. Not that I'm some crazy Houdini fan. Extremely against that shit, you know, giving people this uh, idea that you're talking to their dead relative and shit. And whether or not that's possible, you know, she believes it is, I believe it's not. Uh, I know that motherfucker's not doing it. He's just a phony. A big fat phony. <laughs> Yeah, but we're going to, like, use her phone to broadcast, and she'll point at herself from it, because I'm going to need to use this phone for just a second. We're about to give somebody a check, so I want to take a picture of them with the check, so there's no saying I never give them the check. And it's not because I don't trust them, it's because I think they might be getting dementia. Yeah. Because it already happened. Let me put it this way. I don't I don't take precautions like that. Like, you'll see me, like, block stuff from Dottie. Sometimes it's like her skull is getting too close to me. I'm not just paranoid. I had to have a tooth removed because she bashed me and dropped my skull. So now I'm talking about that and I, I take a precaution. So he already misplaced two checks. So I was like, man, that's like a bunch of money, dude. Like, you better find them. You know? And uh, so now I take a picture of I'm sure it's understood. You got this check. Here's a picture of you with it. You know? switch over to her phone and then I'll just use this phone real quick. Well, I think we did good on the dollar items for Christmas gifts. Me too. Steve said, do you have, do you have those six and a half foot chains for tricks? Steve said it? It's, oh, it is Steve Balboa. Who was the, the other guy? Tommy Tough Knuckles. Yeah. Right, right, right. Now, do I have what? Six and a half foot chains? Yes. You mean like a loop? Like the infinite chain? Yeah, I have that. I do that. You're talking about more of like a street con, right? Like, kind of like you would do three card Monty or something on the street, but with a chain. We call it fast and loose, which sounds like you're talking about a woman being fast and loose, but what you're doing is you know, if I put my finger here, the chain holds fast. But if I put it over here, it's loose, and I can take it right off. Is that the trick you're talking about? Because, yeah. We'll be right where... We're not going anywhere yet. She's going to go ahead and start broadcasting. She won't have the chat during this year. But in a few minutes, we will be right back.
that shirt. It's uncle, but we are here. Just bear with us.
know if we're, I don't know if you can hear me or if we're broadcasting. Yeah, she just left the phone sitting here. Okay. Well. I'll broadcast in a minute. All righty. Thank you. Love you Love too. talking to Tonk's uncle. He came out and gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Okay. Start the gimbal and start the program. He's a good guy, Todd. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of him. So, like I was saying about the uh, having to take a picture, he wanted to review like how much money I had given him. And he was off by a little bit of money. I was like, well, I gave a check to your new wife. Did she give it to you? He's like, no. I was like, okay, well, I have a picture of her with it, March 29th. And he was like, okay, well, we're good. I don't need to be showing. Oh, I didn't. Okay, great. So, I also. So he had this cardboard outside of his house, like a bunch of it. And you don't do that. You don't leave a big TV box outside of your house. It's like going, hey, come rob us, you know? Yeah, you don't do that. Right. So I'm going to get rid of this and several other cardboard boxes because they, they just, it, this kind of clutter in particular, cardboard, and hopefully it hasn't already happened. It's not getting in this fucking car. will attract rodents and roaches and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go throw them away. Megan had a question. I, mean, I usually eat like uh, something I've already prepared and frozen. And I have several options, but I will prepare fresh whatever Dottie wants, unless she does like macaroni and cheese on her own. But she has options as well, so she just has to tell me what she wants and I'll make it. But she has, you know, in the freezer there's steak, there's pork chops. Uh, there's tilapia. There's, uh, did we ever get salmon? I forget. I don't think we so. Haven't. We haven't gotten that yet. She just ran out of salmon. But there's a uh, chop suey, which I would call goulash. Uh, there's, uh, some various chicken cuts. There's, uh, I don't, I don't remember what, oh, orange chicken. Yeah, there's a whole box. Really? Yeah. Uh, that one is Innovations, like Asian uh, brand. That's not something I made. Uh, I think there's other options, too. We have also some frozen shit, like some lean cuisines for her. And a couple of, like, a cheese lasagna and a vegetable lasagna that are in a box from Walmart. But there's also two big fat things that lasagna in there that I made. So you know that's better than the one from Walmart. Steve Balboni says, y'all hear about Mike? Oh boy. This is good. Are you talking about Mr. Hawk? Are you referring to Mr. Hawk and what happened to him? Is that, is that, is that who you're Or are you referring to Mr. Hunt? Are you... No. Tell us about it, Steve. Tell no, him. I didn't hear about it. <laughs> Tell us about it. Steve Pitboss. Steve. 
<laughs> panda just disappears when yeah. Steve comes in, you know. Well, I mean, There's no panda when you've never seen Steve and Panda in the same room. I, I, I had to leave one of Panda's comments because he wanted, it was something about, is she going to be something about clothes? Yeah, she has no pants on, right. Just wearing a dress. She's wearing a dress. I believe it's Robert. Panda. Yeah, yeah. Steve sure. is Robert. But you know what? I'm 20 fucking different people, so. Yeah. You know, back, back in the days of Google Hangouts, it'll hold 10 people. But if four people block you, you get kicked out. So I would just go ahead and be four people. You know what I mean? So that if somebody came in I didn't want to there, I just, boom, you're gone. Or, you know, you, you just like that, you or know? if someone didn't want me in there, you can just add me back. Well, yes, but once you're blocked by one person, you couldn't be added back. That is not the point that I'm making at all. I know, I just don't the words I said mean the thing that I was trying to convey. And that is, I would be four people, so if somebody came in, I could boot them out by myself. That was funny, though. Yeah. Or if somebody, for instance, booted me out, I could enter with someone else and block the person that blocked me. And then do that three more times, and they're gone, and then I can re-enter. I think you, Steve, Steve Balboni says I'm lost, bro. Just tell us about Mike. We didn't hear about Mike. You tell us. Tell us about Mike. I don't know. Yeah, they don't last very long. There's no way that those batteries are 5,000 milliamp hours. Look at this fucking goose. What is this motherfucker thinking? He, he, he fucking king in the fucking parking lot, man. What is this? He's like, yeah, I'm the fucking king. Oh, here's another one. He's like, no, I'm the fucking king over here. You know what? You're both assholes. Yeah, they are. I gotta chase my little squirrel all by myself. Get out of the way. <laughs> Can't how we stop it. Look at this. Okay, good. Steve says I have a dog. Yeah, sure. Sure you do. Yeah, we like dogs, but we're definitely cat people.
Where to now, my dear? Uh, and we might go get the rest of that cardboard. What? We might go back to Jeff's and just get the rest of that cardboard. Turn the camera around. sitting out in the weather and the uh, handle of the track, but honestly, we're probably just going to sell them, you know what I mean, that uh, <clears throat> I want to replace the suitcase that I use, but I want to have four wheels on it like yours do, so you can just roll it, you know, without having to clean it. Steve said banned in about seven and a half states, but they're kind of dogs. The straight guys? What's banned? Dog. It is a band. It is a band from the 80s. Band it sounds like it's from the 50s, but it's actually from the 80s. Maybe you didn't know that. <laughs> I'm so the Stray Cats is a band from the 80s.
bit another time. It's just literally had two pieces of cardboard, one flat one and one awkward one. Is that Mara showing the shoes? I just asked her if she needed these dental impressions that were in the trash. Okay, then the answer is no. Alright, so I will pull over and do it. Switch you on Chrome. Where's Chrome? Let me, let me, let me check Chrome. Yeah. I'm going to switch on Chrome. entire life. I've never said, oh, I'm glad this person's dead, except for Steve Jobs. Glad. Just get the fuck out, dude. Now, I said about Nelson Mandela, I'm glad he stayed dead, because if there was ever a candidate to be the Antichrist, it's him. So why is this like this? Why is it, is it just like your account. How come I can't just switch over to the motherfucker? Ah, oh, fucking hate. Fucking just fucking hate. It.
that's what it should have done to begin with. Okay, now, I didn't do anything special or different. Now we go over here to manage, and here's the one that's live right now, and in it uh, is the actual, like under analytics, that's how many people are actually watching right now, okay? And normally there's like a chat there too, let me see if I turn it sideways, what happens? Let's see if you can see the chat here. It's acting like that motherfucker's not open, but it's open. stupid Shaquanda names and shit. But what the hell is Ricks? You know, there, there are so many stupid, just using words as names like rainbow and shit like this. Oh, man. Grand, are we driving somewhere? Yeah, we're just uh, driving between my uncle's house and kind of like behind Books of Mil Books of Million. What is it called? Books of Million? Where there's just dumpsters and we're going to get rid of this cardboard trash that he's had sitting in his carport, <clears throat> which is a bad idea. You can't have that shit sitting outside in your carport for months and months. You're going to attract uh, roaches or rodents. So we're, we're getting rid of it. That's it. Grandma's asking how we're thinking with us. Why? Why? We're good. How's things with you? Yeah, how's everything going with you, Sick of seeing it, and one feature item was a huge box for a big TV. You know, and it's like you can't have that sitting out in your carport. It's like a billboard for robbers or burglars or whatever. It really is. Like, hey, come to this big TV. Why not? Home? You know, uh, that dumpster there has been replaced with a smaller one. It looks kind of full, so we won't go to that. One, I was just putting stuff in, it's empty, but I'm not trying to be abusive and use up their dumpster and put a bunch of shit in there. We'll go to the next one down and see how that's going. Yeah. The stores use the dumpsters for theirs. Yeah. You don't want to take up they need to use. But for gardening purposes, I've certainly taken more cardboard out of that dumpster than I've ever put in it. Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Now, uh, that door is 
up and by that time I don't want to go there but we'll go to this one right up here it's already got the lid open which is a huge relief someone buy it well I don't know if that's true yes that's true but I know that it was a big pain in the ass to get the other one open Too bad. Todd said it's pretty windy. Yeah, I feel the wind. All right, I'm going to go to this other dumpster to get rid of these other two boxes. Just Taking up your whole dumpster, you know? Right, because they need to put stuff in there too. Yeah. Disney is 13. If you're talking about cardboard, we just did two. And there's two more pieces of cardboard over there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. But we did it to help him out. Yeah. It's a minivan. It's got a four foot wide clearance, and I forget how high, but not quite four foot, uh, over three foot high. So, you know, the interior is a little higher than the actual door, but that, uh, that door I don't think is quite four foot. Are we going to the small Walmart? We may as well, yeah. Okay, if we're going to the when we take the seat out, you know, you can fit something four foot wide, 70 inches long, and over three foot high. I forget exactly how high. We put two desks in here the other day that were 29 inches high, 20 inches wide, and 65 inches long. Two of them. Yeah, I didn't know that's how big they were. Yeah. I think maybe we can show them the puzzle we're working Yeah, of course. Yeah, I like puzzling, and you know, Todd's uncle. Jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle. We live in his uncle's house. We pay rent. And he got remarried, so him and his daughter moved out. And I've been here about eight years, and out of respect for them, I can set up my puzzle area. So, I mean, we could have done it upstairs at any time. But, uh, but we, didn't, we never really used the living room. Like, the entire time I've lived there, 
which has been 22 years. I've never used the living room. Some of you probably heard earlier, while he was over, I instructed some robots to make a theme song for him, or it's really a whole song, not just a theme song, and uh, I've actually instructed robots to make a bunch of songs lately, and, and we're going to review those in the second part of the stream, so that's going to be happening. Yeah, yeah, we're just going in here to get eggs. I, I actually I feel like I have to use the restroom too, but I, I feel like I'll do that too, rather than wait till I get home and then desperately have to use it. But I've been drinking a big thing of coffee, like 32 ounces of coffee. I haven't drank it all yet, but there's not much of it left. You said, but no, you remind me of my buddy Mike. I like it. Found this by accident. I thought you meant Mr. Hawk or Mr. Hunt. Do you know them, Mike Hunt and Mike Hawk? But <laughs> well, we're happy you found us, right, Tom? Yeah, of course. But happy accident. Yeah, that's right. How you doing? I feel really pretty today. You are very pretty, honey. It feels good to be back into my nice summery dress at the moment. Yeah. You found that funny. You sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. Classic. Tom knows I love my summery dress. Real Mike Hawks at gmail.com. <laughs> That's the S on it. Finally fix it. This little gate here's been going wait, making this awful noise for a long time. <laughs> Sounds like they actually fixed it though. Hey Todd, Steve said, are y'all married for real? Yeah, we're married. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I mean, we're like we have a huge age difference, but we're married. Your grandparents had 29 years. Before. 28. Apparently. 20. You're 26, and Megan's not like you're off. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, we're leaving married for 
six years, I legally have his last name. So, uh, yeah. Age gaps are common, actually. Yeah, they used to be way more common, I'm sure. I mean, I'm not saying you're giving us a hard time, I'm just saying, you don't give us a hard time, we don't give you one. No, it's understandable that you might be, I don't want to say dumbfounded by it, but, uh, you know, I don't know, mystified. What's the word I'm looking for here? Word up. I don't know what that means. I gotta use a bathroom. We're by the bathroom. I'm looking at the baby stuff. We're not having a baby. I want to make that clear. I, my cousin had a baby back in December. Well, my cousin's wife. So she's my cousin too. They had a little boy. Good idea for Christmas, you know. Well, I mean, he was born two days after Christmas. My cousin's baby. Oh, I was just looking at stuff, trying to get an idea for baby Theo. Yeah. I was like, we don't have a baby. What? I was like, we don't have a baby, but my cousin oh, did. Oh, right. You know what's happening over here? Seasonal, that's seasonal. Seasonal. And then that's on clearance. It looks all it looks like all seasonal to me. Yeah. yeah. There's a clearance rack up here that we'll take a look at. Pandas in the chat. Wow, Mark, it was everything you can bring. We have a lot. I, I don't know if you do or not. some bum hydration for when your bum gets dry. Nobody wants a dry bum. Well, we're getting some raw EA8. No, I don't know what this shit is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I, I, we're just looking at what's available on clearance. We're not loading up on anything. We came here to buy eggs. I'm going to see how much these are, honey. Uh-huh. She might get some M&Ms if they're like 25 cents or something like that. And this is a little clearance rack so you know we just check it and see if there's anything that yep, we'll for sure use you know
Here's some of this. <laughs> I would like. I would like to look this up real quick. Say what? Okay, that's like 25 cents. I have gone Oh yeah, $1.32? Yeah, they damn mines. A pack of M&M's on the clearance rack for $1.32. Straight up to catch it later. Okay. Well, the eggs are probably going to be like $4 for 18 of them. But they did get up at one point. Hey, what's up? They did get up to like $6 at one point. Which is crazy. Yeah, how's it doing? Steve said I sub. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great, great to have the inventor of the corn husky. I really had to go through these eggs. I was just looking at their clear little food section. There were like five broken ones in there. And then the uh, cartons that I was getting the good ones out of had mostly broken ones. And they're like, they say large white eggs, but these are the small eggs, man. Large egg doesn't mean what it used to, that's for sure.
Yeah, you gotta check every single time, every single egg. And usually you can just kinda like move the egg a little. But this one I had to pick up every egg and look at the bottom of it. Egg fine. Oh really? Yeah, because okay. a woman coming to school. never do it, but that was on the clearance thing, and I figured, you know, it might be compromised, you know? Take a picture of this and see. Back it up and do the photos, honey. Okay. Okay. But go ahead, send it to me full quality though, okay? Don't send me some little knockdown version of it, okay? Yeah, see, I don't know if that's actually going to do that. I don't know if it actually comes through full quality that way, but that's okay. Man, it's like, oh, wow, video games. Video games? Video game consoles and play. No, those were like, uh, what are those? Lotto? One is a lottery machine, or maybe two of them. One's a lottery machine. One is a place where you like fill out lottery little cards that you, they look like a, like a standardized test. And the other was like where you put your change in and it counts it. And then they charge you fucking 10% to take your change, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't see too many video games anymore, man. Max Barbecue has a couple of them. It's got a Miss Pac Man, and then it's got one with multiple games in it. But they're like the miniature cabinets, they're not the full size cabinets. never see him anymore there's there's like in walmart there's a little room but i don't think they have any video games in it yeah you know, claw machines and shit
And they have their like machine that you make your house key with in there. Oh, there. It's covered with like a tinted shield. You can't even see it at all. The license plate. You don't want the cops to get in. I mean, it's totally illegal to do that. It in is? So, yeah, so, yeah. so you're saying a cop could get in for that? Absolutely. Even in that phone charger, God, I, I still have my key plate. So 
was like, I said penis and now my wife works. And as we cross over this causeway across this marsh, we go over a small bridge over a river, and we'll be on what you would refer to as an inland island. Most of the islands here are what you call barrier islands, and they're further out from the mainland shore, such as Jekyll Island and St. Simon. This island is an inland island called Blythe Island. It's mainly residential. The guy that sold us our van, he used to live over here. Cargo said Niagara region is also a peninsula. Is that right? Of the Cargo side. I've never really studied it. Me either. That guy who sold us the van was
was also a different network then. The network definitely was upgraded because the phone I used to use back then just quit working one day. And then I figured out it wasn't like my phone wasn't the problem. They, I, I finally got to the bottom of it. Like, oh, yeah, your phone's no longer compatible with our network. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. And that's when I bought the first smartphone I ever had. Before that, I always used a flip phone. Or, you know, even before that, a Nokia. So as we cross over this little bridge, we're leaving Blythe Island now. South Brunswick River. This river's much smaller than the other one, of course. But uh, now we're back on the mainland peninsula. Really, actually, no. I'm sorry. We're south of that on the mainland of Georgia. We're not on the actual Brunswick Peninsula. We live just barely south of a, a good bit to the west of the actual peninsula of Brunswick. But you know, stuff here. There's neighborhoods, like way too many neighborhoods. And there's, you know, a few businesses out here now. Pretty sure there's a school out here too. Yeah, there's schools out here now that weren't here back when I was a kid. I mean, it wouldn't make sense if there's schools out here. The population of the earth has doubled since I was a kid. Who knows, uh, what the local population has done, probably more than double. Well, I'm going to get ready to turn the camera towards us. Sure. All right. We don't know how the signal's going to be once we enter the carport. Yeah, it may crap out a bit in the carport, but once we're inside, everything will be okay. I think just it, it freaks out when the Wi-Fi kicks in is all. And go to we'll be right back probably for a minute. Up to a minute. I'll drink some other stuff, like uh, I think this morning I had some mango drink, which is made with about 20% mango juice. Yeah, I probably won't be monitoring the chat much. That's fine. 
As long as we have Wi-Fi, I can put it on their phone right there. Yeah, but cameras and just put them in the bushes at Disney and leave them there. Well, <laughs> just leave them running. Todd's going to be third now. Like, okay, Dottie and Cargo, go have fun. Yeah. Super 
just a moment. I feel like that's not really very clear yet. Okay, it's better there now. Okay. Could okay. Be better. Thank you, Megan, for letting us know. Yes. That looks good. It's a lot better. Carter said, Dottie, I will send you a pic of what I'm working on. Okay. We have some ornament. A whole bag full. Oh, almost a whole bag full. I mean, look how pretty that is. It's like silver and blue. Polka dots. That one's just silver. They're really pretty. What are these? Like, I yeah. Uh, icicles. Mm -hmm. Novel shot group. Doesn't say. Doesn't say what? Icicles. That's what they are. Basically. Basically. So we got a lot more ornaments. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I assume you wanted to keep that box, right? This? Yeah. Yeah, that's why we brought it home. Okay. All right, let's let him have a look at the 
jigsaw puzzle. freaking out again. <clears throat> Sorry about this. So we set it up over a couple of tables just to make it easier to sort areas. Of the, that's why I like this is all the blues. This is all having to do with this little angel in the corner, etc. This is all hay and this is all related to this one guy probably. Think. Yeah. Well, let's see the box. The so this is the picture right here. Now I want to say something about this, okay? To me, what this is meant to depict is Jesus as a, baby, as a newborn with Mary and Joseph and these three people are supposed to be wise men, right? Bearing gifts. Of, it's like well it's hard to say which is which. This is probably supposed to be the gold. No, that's the gold. This would be, one of these would be myrrh and frankincense, right? But this is a, a, a misconception, all right, that the nativity scene is, is told a couple of ways in the Bible. And it does not say that three wise men came to the birthplace of Jesus. It just doesn't say it, okay? And this is what you're shown over and over again through life. But what it says is that wise men came to Herod and asked where they could find the new king. And, you know, when it, that doesn't necessarily mean they spoke directly to Herod, but it was enough to get him upset to say, you know what? Go out and kill every baby that's two years old or younger. Okay? Now, the reason for this was it had been two years since Jesus was born. And it doesn't say three wise men came. It doesn't say they went into a uh, area that had a manger in it. A manger is like a trough, okay, not a stable. People get that confused too. They think a manger is a stable. No, a manger is a trough that you might find in a stable or what you call a, uh, I believe it's called a livery or a livery, just where animals are kept a barn of sorts, but it doesn't have to be a building. It could be an outcropping under a cliff, for instance, a cave, it could be any of these things. Now, they brought three gifts that are mentioned, frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And this is where the idea that there were three wise men comes from. All right. But it also says they went into a house. And it doesn't say how many there were. There was probably a contingent of them. And this was enough to get Herod upset. You see, it wasn't like three guys showed up and say, hey, where's the king? You know. <laughs> so <clears throat> those are all the pieces that it was two years after the birth of Jesus. It wasn't in the birthplace, but in a house. There weren't three of them. This is this is just taken from the idea that there were three gifts mentioned. All right? That doesn't mean that was all the gifts either. Okay? And uh, these things get conflated with the story of the birthplace of Jesus happening in a manger that was in some sort of stable outside of an inn. So there's that. So this is a very fucked up picture, really, like as far as like being an accurate depiction of what's going on. 
Also, one of those wise men was probably black. Uh, what is his name? I forget his name right now. And none of those guys are black, as far as I can tell. Uh, I, here's another thing. You see how two of them are wearing crowns, and this guy has, like, a special headdress? You get that we three kings kind of thing, right? That, uh, as far as I know, none of them were kings, okay? They were just what was stated as wise men. And it doesn't say there were three of them. It, it, it just says wise men came. And that easily could have been 30 of them, all right? It didn't have to be three of them. Yeah. Enough to get Herod upset, like I say. So that, that depiction that we're making here is all screwed up, but that's okay. It's just for fun. It's a jigsaw puzzle. I got this video. And I, yes, I don't think it goes against the commandments to... You know, make this picture. <clears throat> picture. Uh, you know, in the commandments it says, "Do not make any graven image of anything in heaven or earth." <laughs> Flat out, it just says that. But like so many things with the Bible, it's been translated. Okay, and there are implications that aren't stated. Like when it says, "Thou shalt not kill," it doesn't mean. Don't kill a chicken and eat it, okay? Which a lot of vegetarians would like it to mean that, but it doesn't, okay? It means don't murder. That's what it means. So when it says that you should not make any graven image of anything on heaven or earth, it means for the purposes of idolatry or worship. And in general, it means when you hear the word image, it means sculpture, Okay? Like you, in Revelations, there's a bit about an image that can speak. Now, it's probably referring to a sculpture, even though at the time, no images could speak. And now, they absolutely can. No problem. We see them every day. You're seeing one right now. Okay? So, I don't think it was in Revelation. I don't think it was referring to to video technology. I think it's referring to a statue that can fucking speak and move. And uh, <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that means it's robotic technology or animatronic technology, but it could be. It's hard to say. But it appears to be a sculpture that has basically come to life in a very creepy, supernatural way. And that's probably what you got to look out for. Just like the mark of the beast. People are like, oh, it's this microchip. Oh, it's this and that. You know what? It says it's a mark. And it says in the forehead, on the forehead or in the hand. And people go, oh, it'll be a chip buried inside your hand. Well, you know what? This puzzle piece, it's in my hand. It's not inside my hand under the skin. Okay, it's in my hand. All right? So a mark in the hand right here is enough. And, and you think, well, oh, that's not advanced technology enough. It's enough because you get complicit assholes. It'll be like, well, show me your marker. You can't buy anything, you know, or, you know, you can't sell anything. Simple as that. And people just comply for sure. So I believe it's just a mark, you know, not some kind of technology that makes it happen. So in other words, it has not happened. So what time is it? 4.42. 4.42. Now at 5.30, we're going to start a new stream. And uh, that'll probably be us like cooking and stuff like that at, at the beginning. But then after that, Or maybe now is the appropriate time to show you some songs that we've made. Maybe now is the appropriate time for that.
Okay, I'll stop recording. All right. Because this isn't going anywhere. We'll get back to this. Ah. Okay. Let me take this upstairs. So we're going to switch over to the home setup. And then for the second part of the stream, we'll switch back to the portable setup. I have to leave my... So we're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna to need to unlock the door. Get the key out. Good grief. Look at these things. Good grief. <laughs> this one's so lazy. Look at that. Oh, so lazy. The cargo says, aww. Yeah. Do the night, girl. Very lazy. You get my bed. Baby, hi, my lovey girl. I love my baby. Oh. She loves her little baby. We got that for her when she got fixed. Cause she got fixed on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. You and the gun. I'm not hurting her. There we go, guys. You and the little gun. Here, hold up for Maggie's bedroom. Oh, we got that yawn on camera, honey. Oh, kisses for mommy. Kisses for mommy. You good girl. You got your berry cuddling her? Is that your baby? And then there's that one. Big yawn. Keep cuddling your baby. It's adorable. I mean, you're adorable no matter what. She's like, I don't want to cuddle it now, mom. Too bad. Look at the beans. You want to give kisses? I'll <laughs> move the nose with the, with the camera. Are you moving the camera with your nose? She moved the camera with her nose. Yeah, bell boops. Or bell butt. Yeah. And then there's this one. Benjamin is like, I'm here too. Color goes at Bell and Riley have matching bears, lol. I don't know how to fix this, Todd, so. I know what you mean by fix, but let me have it. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the desktop setup, so to speak. One of two close to that? What's going on? Is it off? Yeah, it's off. Okay, give me a second. I stressed it out or something. Okay. Okay, Google, turn on bed lamp. Actually, bed sockets off. Sorry, it looks like the bed lamp is available right now. I don't even need it, just for a minute. So I'm going to switch over to that. This takes a second. Because I don't leave everything plugged in all the time. I gotta plug in this USB. Yeah. Take this lens cap off. Put on his headset. Turn on his camera. I might have already been on. Gotta turn on this program called. I gotta turn on his keyboard. And I gotta turn on this program called EOS. Webcam Utility Pro because I'm going to use a Canon camera. 
I gotta turn off the loopy SRT so he doesn't want to force us to see that one. Uh, it's not really stuck. There we go. It's stuck just a bit there. Make sure you don't take your clothes off or anything, honey. I'm not. Okay, great. I'm just having a Okay, great. So I'm going to then. A weird noise or something. Switch over in a moment to this uh, other layout. Move that or that. And let me make sure my audio is turned on on this thing because I know it's not. So I'm going to mute that. I will come in a minute. And right now I'm just checking for audio. Just checking for audio. I'm not sure this is in the audio stack. And I will know in a minute. Okay, I'm going to now hit the transition. I know you can't hear me, but now I am checking for audio. Okay, you can hear that. Why am I not hearing it? Do I have that muted? Oh, I have it muted. Okay. Carter said, I don't know that Dottie's going to have enough wall space for her new year. She's getting, oh well, lol, oh well. Yeah, well, there's another room with some wall space. I'm going to select a t shirt. I'll know that. Turn this phone, stop broadcasting with that, just for the heck of it. Okay, so we've been doing some stuff with AI. Now, one thing I wanted to do uh, was create, and this isn't feeding back, is it? I'm not getting like a weird echo or anything, am I? Let me know if I am. So please inform me if I am creating an echo of any kind because I'm trying to listen to the chat or whatever, the stream, while I do this. And I'm just going to mute that there so I can do other stuff. Now, <clears throat> I will need to check the audio again here. Uh, so we've been... As you know, I think you know, uh, last time we did this, we were using a thing called Suno, okay? And it is an AI audio generator. It, it, it makes lyrics as well. It makes uh, the actual singing for those lyrics, okay? We can, we can do that right now. We can make a, uh, a song, okay? I can just type in here, and we'll do this later. We'll commit, or we'll we'll do one by committee. Okay, we'll just uh, come up with a uh, idea, and then we'll uh, make choices and stuff. But we won't be doing it with Suno. But I'm just going to uh, tell it, you know, uh, you know, a, a let's say a synth pop uh, song. I know it's misspelled. This is just a demonstration, a synth pop song about uh, a long haired cat that is totally spoiled. <laughs> Named Belle. She's like, I am spoiled. You are spoiled, my love. Oh, dang it. Hold on, let me get a caps lock there. Named Belle. And, uh,. Did I, did I, spelled spoiled let me fix that not that it would even matter I think it would just take care of it honestly I'm gonna hit create oh I need to uh, log in let me make sure I do that and I want you to note that 
there is a custom mode that I could put like lyrics in there and stuff but I'm just going to do it by description and tell it to create it okay and oh man why is it making four I must have hit the button twice but that's fine so it's calling these first two renditions Bell's Paradise let me uh, move this up here or something let me try it let me try putting it in here like that and let me try to move that to a better spot we'll put it right there and then the other one's called Bell's Love Affair. Oh, so let's just see what it produced, okay? And I want you to make sure we have audio, honey. Okay, so here it comes. Okay, so to recap, it just made a song instantly, okay? It's two minutes, or that was only a minute, I think. It'll make up to two minutes. It said, long-haired cat, Belle is her name. Spoiled and pampered, she's in her own fame. She struts around with a sassy gait, living life in her own paradise state. That's so much her. <laughs> Belle's got attitude. She's a diva queen. A fluff of fur like you've never seen. She sleeps on silk, resting on her throne. <laughs> In her world, she's never alone. Belle, oh Belle, living life so fine. Catnip dreams and a life so divine. Belle, oh Belle, she's got it all. Her paradise, she will never fall. <laughs> That's version one. Okay? Yeah, they're not going anywhere. So... Version two now. Let's just listen to all four of these. I only meant to create two because it creates two at a time, just so you know. Here's Bell's Paradise version two. It's just going to have the same lyrics. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's just going to sound different. Oh, oh, that's still the other song finishing out. Interesting. It, it has an outro that we didn't listen to. But we're going to uh, go ahead and play the second version now. Then there's like over 30 seconds of outro. Uh-oh. I 
I take it, Cargo, you don't mean you knocked over one spool of thread, but probably an entire box of it, right? That's that's how it is for me, for sure. So That sucks. So here's a Bell's Love Affair. Two versions of it it made. And what is this salsa hair metal shit? What is that? That's not me. Why does it say that? It says, this user hasn't made any song. It's getting confused or something. It, it's crediting that person with... Uh, making this song but <clears throat> that is really weird so here here we go here's the other version this one says long hair flowing like a ri long hair some of the longest people say love the long hair bell the cat the ultimate diva spoiled and pampered she's in control she's frankly she's uh, captured your heart body and soul <laughs> she struts around like she's the queen queen with a regal presence so serene her every wish oh it must be met she'll make sure you never forget bell oh bell that cat that's so spoiled she'll steal your heart leave it coiled leave it coiled <laughs> with those big green eyes and a purse so sweet bell the long-haired cat you can't defeat and here she is Thirty seconds of outro. All right. So then there's this one right here. Same lyrics, different sound. Okay, so you get the idea there. So we created, like, well, the real goal of using these AI things is is to create a theme song for the channel. Now, this is Suno. Let's see what this one is. I, I think this is one that came out pretty good, but it would not like stick with the same voice or repeat the same chorus if I put a verse in there. It, it would want to do other stuff when I came back to the chorus. So I just kind of repeated the chorus over and over in one of these. This might be it. I think this is the one. Like a magic spell, the 
Okay, let me let me say first of all, Suno did not make these lyrics. Some of them was they were made by Chat GPT based on my suggestions and others like that chorus is almost entirely me. Uh, I would credit the AI with coming up with the words in life's sweet dance that for sure it, it did that uh, and the word story. Other than that I, I you know I changed anything it came up with to be this. Yeah. All righty. Now you'll notice there's like other lyrics there, but this is where I pasted them all in at once and it didn't make it quite to the end. And I was like, okay, just keep repeating the chorus. All right, I just kept doing that, kept doing that. So what I'm doing there is I'm trying to get a consistent chorus to repeat itself. And that's very difficult with these AI things. But just by doing it over and over again, Suno did do a pretty good job. Variations, you know, in the music. Bro, <laughs> just wait. Don't worry. 
I, I think I have another version of that that fades out or something. But that's not bad. I liked that. <clears throat> All right? That's why I kept extending it. But, dude. Daniel, I see that you're here. Hello. And I see you say, wow, AI is making music now. And that was AI. And, uh, you know, I provided it with the lyrics, etc. Some of those lyrics I had written by AI. Chat GPT in particular, version 3.5. But this is right here this happened on April 9th at 10:44 p.m. okay but a couple of days later a different thing came out that makes this look like it's in its infancy and i'm going to show you now all right The first thing that I'll show you is where I've made just a 30 second thing with that chorus. Okay? You will not believe the difference here. <clears throat> and if you are familiar with Antonio Carlos Jobim, inventor of the bossa nova from Brazil, and you are familiar with Estrude Gilberto, who was a female singer. Uh, it is like they have been resurrected from the dead. It is mind-blowing. Okay, so I went through a whole rigmarole where I extended this song and put verses in. and uh, I can play that for you, and you'll see how it like tries to go down different paths and stuff, like doubles up the voice, or like it sounds just like Antonio Carlos Jobim jumps in there and starts singing, as he would, and it's pretty amazing. But the final product I came up with repeats the chorus just I use one verse only okay and uh, I feel like this is our main shit now this is the theme and let me let me say <clears throat> there there is a intro as well which is some different words so what I did was I took that first chorus I extended 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 I put a verse then I put chorus 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 afterwards I told it now, now fade out, make an outro, and then I told it to put the intro. Okay, or at least that's my methodology. Now, I think that's what I did then. So here it is. Okay. As dawn breaks o'er the gates of dreams Where the magic stirs with each new day Through waking streams Sunlight gleams. Our journey starts, and we're on our way. At winter slowly. Now you see that? You see how it just it added that intro and then just smoothly transitioned right into that that you heard before, and that that you heard before was made before this intro. Okay, and I'll play it again. Okay, just so you can get the full depth of what just happened there. Here's what I started with. At winter slowly, cherish each new day. Okay, and here's where I've added the intro before that, and it just blends smoothly. It starts with a start instead of sounding like it's in the middle of a song, and then just blends right into what it already made. Of dreams where the 
the magic stars with each new day Through waking streets the sunlight gleams Our journey starts and we're on our way At winter's fire Cherish each new day In life's sweet dance Let the worries fade away May through December So yeah, we're done as a species, obviously. That is... <clears throat> absolutely the downfall of humanity right there. Because it is so beautiful and emotive and all that. It's just... Creative. <laughs> we're done. <clears throat> so, part of that... You'll notice it did a thing that was probably gibberish... Or it could have been Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese. It's hard to say. I don't know enough to tell you. But it was probably gibberish. And this is the thing that AI does called hallucinating. And I'll show you another example of that shortly. But I liked it. I liked the way it sounded. So I kept that part in. I'll play that part. Because it sounds just like Astrid Gilberto would do. She just goes into Portuguese sometimes. and comes back to English. No, no, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, that we'll get to that in a minute. Sorry, sorry, I don't know why it's playing that one. We'll get to that in a minute. Right, right. On this next one right here. 
it just sounds like gibberish, but it sounds, it's being pronounced like Portuguese is pronounced. And I liked it. Right here. So there are a million outtakes. This okay? <laughs> I deleted a lot of them. All right, but uh, I'll play a version I was working on and show you how it goes down different paths. If I can pull it up here, I'm trying to uh, get it to display all of my shit. Okay. I need to do a wider screen so I can see my uh, little things where I liked it, when I, where I had done liked it. it. Okay, honey. Uh, that could be one here. I'm going to play this one. No, it's not that. All right. for a longer song. Okay, this is probably it here. No, 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 not those. Be further back in time than that. A little further back than that. And we'll get to those in a minute. Okay, that I think is a different version, so I would almost guarantee that it's this, okay, because it says it's, see how it says Breeze of Ipanema, this is fully like, you know, reference to the Bossa Nova, Astru Gilberto, she did a version of it where she sings in English, then in Portuguese, in English, Portuguese. You know, the tall and tan and what is she, blonde and lovely? The girl from Ipanema goes walking and as she passes each one, she passes, says, ah, right? So uh, that had to be the one. Let me, let me go back in time here, though. And I'll play it, and then I'll play some outtakes that I skipped over, but kept in here to, for one thing, show them to you, and uh, to demonstrate how different shit happens. I think this is the one that we were listening to before. So this is the, going to be the one where there's different verses and shit, and you'll see how it changes the voice and stuff. And, and, and notice how I did not add an intro to this. That is because what I found out is when this thing gets to 4 minutes and 22 seconds, it won't make the song any longer. That's the end of it. That's what made me decide to go back and do the other one like I did it. Okay? So I couldn't add an intro to this. So this is that same root chunk that we heard but it's going to do a bunch of different shit now Thank you. 
Through December, may mean two more years. Hold on to spring and create your own story. In the haunts of yesteryears, memories embrace. Past echoes fade as we chart our own course. But in It's just like Tom Jobim jumped in there. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly how he would do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, that's exactly it. And then sometimes you don't even ask it to end the song. It just gets lazy and does it like that. And there's no point in trying to extend it after that. But you can't extend that song anyway because it's 4 minutes and 22 seconds. So here's a couple of outtakes. I'll skip right to the portion that I took out. Wait a minute. Okay, all right. Started doing a duet, but then uh, Tom started trying to take over the song, so I, I went a different way with it. But but check this out. We chart our own course, but in newfound liberty, we find our space in freedom's embrace. We find our source. So that was cool, but uh. Then I couldn't get it to go back to the original voice. You know, it sort of wanted to have him take over the song. I didn't like that, so I ended up with what I ended up with. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Not a minute till the 5:30 in West Virginia. 
Okay, well, I'm going to stop this stream and start the new one, which is in part two there. All right, the link, the, the pinned comment. There's a link in there. Okay, and I will uh, see you over there. So we're going to end this one. And it may say for a second, we'll be right back. We will not be right back. We're, we're, we're going to be at the other stream. So hopefully it won't do that. Let me uh, see what I can do about that.